So over the weekend, I have been testing out this open source AI code assistant that we can actually integrate with Ulama now. So I thought I could just make a quick tutorial on how you can set this up too, because I've been pretty impressed by it. It's free to use. So it's a good alternative, I think, to GitHub Copilot. And it's a good introduction if you want to try out this uh, open source code assistant. So we are going to run this for our VS code, right? Uh, we need uh, an extension called continue, so that's very easy to set up. So basically what I thought, I thought I can walk you through all the steps here. We're gonna try out the new Mistral AI Code Stroll 22B. So that is, we can use that both for the autocomplete and the chat. If you don't have so much memory, we can also use the Deepsea Coder plus the Llama 38B. And yeah, that seems to be working pretty good too. So yeah, let me just walk you through how to set this up and then we're going to do some testing and what we can actually do with this AI code assistant. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just install this continue extension for VS Code. So I'm just going to open this folder here. We also need to install Ulama if you don't already have that. I'm on Windows at the moment, so I'm just going to open that. So let's just uh, continue here. So continue uh, code stroll GPT-4 or more. Just click install here and continue and open in VS Code. You can see I already have this installed. So you just gonna click install here and install that. If you go back here now uh, to download Ulama, you can just follow this link here and click on Windows, Linux or Mac OS, just install that. And then we can move on to the next step. So when you have installed the Ulama and the continue extension, we can start pulling down some models we need to actually run this. I would say if you have at least 16 gigabytes of VRAM, you can try this 22B model. So uh, the way you want to do that is just go to the terminal. Once you have installed Ulama, just go Ulama and pull and we're going to do code stroll, right? And this should pull this. You can see I already have done this. It's 12 gigabytes, so it's a bit of a model, but let's just let this run. And once you have downloaded that, you can see we should be ready to go. And the next step then is of course gonna be to uh, add some configurations to our JSON file. So I'm just gonna copy this here, right? And I'm gonna go to our continue extension. We're gonna click in this cogwheel down here. And then you come to, we can close this terminal now. And then you come to your configuration.json. and just paste in this, I already done this. So just add this to your configuration and you should be ready to go, okay? If you have a smaller GPU, you might want to consider just running the Deepsea Coder and the Llama 3 for this. Uh, that seems to be work pretty good too. So uh, just go to your terminal again, just run Llama pull Deepsea Coder uh, 6.7b base. So we're going to pull that and then you're going to do uh, Llama pull uh, Llama 3, right? And that means that you have every single model. If you also have the Coldstrom model, you can try what works best for you. So I'm just going to pull all of these models now and then we can kind of go to the next step and try to set this up and test it and see how good it works. Okay, so let's open up our VS Studio code here. And what we want to do now, and uh, you can see, I'm just going to kill this terminal. You see, I created a folder with just a test.py file here. Uh, if you go to continue now and we click down here, let's open this a bit more. Uh, we can select, you can see no models found. So what we can do is configure and this should uh, find our models pretty quick, right? Okay, so now we can kind of select from all the models we have. So let's just start with cold straw latest, right? Uh, since I have the memory to run this, so we're just going to select that. And you can see here we have a chat function if you want to use that. But uh, we can also go to our folder and what I always try to do when I use this, uh, let's say, code assistance, I also, I always like to use extended uh, uh, comments. So let's say I wanted to create a simple function. So for example, create a function to count the number of substrings in a string. Okay, so I always start with this comment and then I can do like def. Uh, count, maybe we can get some suggestions now. Count substrings, string sub, uh, okay, so let's try to autocomplete that. Just press tab and we want an example of this. Let's see, test the function, uh, but I want to do like a 
uh, test the func with a user input, right? Okay, let's see if we get a suggestion for that. Yes, we do. Okay, so let's save that. Uh, that was pretty quick, right? Uh, let's run this now and see if it works. So enter a string. GPT-5 is gonna be a huge model. Enter a substring to count. So let's do GPT-5. Okay. Uh, the number of occurrences GPT-5 is gonna be one. Okay, right. So let's run it again. And let's do the same string. And then let's count the G's. So we found the G three times. So this works pretty good. Pretty easy, quick setup. So that means, yeah. I think this is working pretty good. How long did we take to set this up? Yeah, 10 seconds. So yeah, that is one way you can use this, but there are some other ways I wanted to show you too. Another way we can use this, we can just go back to our continue extension. We can use the chat function here. In Python, write a function to count the number of substrings in a string. And this is more of like, a, yeah, what we're used to from ChatGPT, just asking for a function. And let's just copy that. Let's paste it in here. Did I copy? paste it in here and um, we can copy this uh, test function here so we're gonna count the number of LLs here and uh, let's run this hopefully this is two right yeah so that works and we have one more way we can actually use this you can just press ctrl i and we can paste in our request here okay so let's do that and this should just write the code straight up for us like autocomplete style let's just uh, accept that and let's just run it and let's just type in a bunch of strings here a, 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 a doesn't matter let's count the number of a's we found the a five times yeah perfect so that works good too so we have a few options of actually how we can use this and uh, now i want to move on to the final part and that is going to be to using like the code base as context right so to actually use our code base as context we need to download an embeddings model so you can follow this so ulama pull nomadic embed text and we also need to update our configure file uh, so just copy this and add it to the config json as we did before and yeah that should mean that we have access to our code base uh, as context of course this is not gonna work too good i think if the code is, is too big uh, but let's just try it out and see if we can actually get something out of this so i have opened my code base here that has a go program that can run hacker news in like the terminal so let's say i didn't know how to use this so let's say if we can use our code base here to help us run this program so we can just do at code base right so i just said can you explain how the code base worked for me this appears to be a go program especially in a terminal client for hacker news here's an overview of what you can infer provide a text-based interface for accessing hacker news article and comments yeah perfect so i just follow up with how can i test it and here we get our nice instructions how we can do this so we're going to clone this live here you're gonna cd into our folder right so let's just open our terminal and let's uh, cd into this folder yeah then we can uh, copy this go mode install download okay good we can do go build perfect and then we can do dot html text and let's see yeah perfect so this is working now so if we see here we can navigate hacker news now uh in our terminal right arrow and here we can read the hacker news in our terminal so yeah i think this was pretty useful very easy way to uh ask something about your code base but I, like i said i haven't tested this in like a big code base so i don't know how it works that but for these small uh, ones i think it's pretty uh, pretty useful if you want to ask some questions about some parts of the code base right so yeah i thought it was pretty cool easy to set up and it worked pretty good for me fun to play around with these open source models in visual studio code so yeah go check it out uh, finally i just want to shout out uh, the upcoming nordic ai summit uh, because next week i'm going to this summit it's gonna be pretty cool so uh, follow the link in the description if you are around the nordics you can find everything you need to hear if you want to attend so it's in seven days in Oslo. So definitely go check this out. You can find the link in the description below. So yeah, that's basically what I had for today. See you again in a few days.